Hey, welcome to our very first episode of uh, Dream Chasers Basketball Indie um, YouTube channel. This is our uh, very first video cast. Um, I have on Jordan Turner. How you doing, Jordan? Yeah, how about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. So you are a uh, Indianapolis native. Uh, you play basketball. Uh, what was it like growing up in Indiana? Um, I mean, the uh, basketball atmosphere was, I mean, it's the state of basketball. Right. Everybody plays it. Right. So it was just, it was pretty good growing up playing basketball. Right. Had a supportive family. They always let me no matter what. So it was a pretty good. Right. Lifestyle. So what other sports did you play other than basketball? And I know you are, we'll get into, well, first of all, um, Let's talk about the other sports that you played. Uh, let's talk about what school you go to now and what year you are in high school. All right, so first, I played baseball when I was like little. Mm -hmm. uh, football, I was like, actually, I was really good at football. Okay. And then I just stopped playing. Why'd you stop? I don't know, I didn't really like the coach. Okay. High school, so I stopped and then but I've always played basketball ever since I was a kid. I just, that's what I really wanted to play. But it was between football and basketball, and then I dropped football. Okay. Okay. What's, um, what were you about to say? What school do you go to now? Uh, Cardinal Raider. Okay. What year? Sophomore, 2022. Okay. Okay. So what was, uh? so you obviously played basketball in elementary. You played in middle school, correct? Mm hmm What's the difference uh, between the level of uh, how the game is played now? Because I know, um, you know, for the people that don't know you, you were playing varsity uh, this past year. What was mm -hmm. that like? What's the experience and in, in how is the game speed and intensity, um, you know, players? What is it like? Um, for me, I mean, the first thing I notice is a crowd. Okay. Like, that's, that's just what I notice. I don't know why, but it is. So, Right. Obviously, it's going to be a bigger, like, atmosphere, and everything's going to be a lot louder. So, right. I, I really just had to focus in when I was playing and block out the noise. Sometimes I interacted with the crowd, like, when I was doing good, and I would talk back to them right. when they would say stuff. Like, uh, I was on the free throw line. It was, like, it was a game at Lutheran, and I always roll up my shorts, like, really high. Right. And I was, like, messing them up, but we were losing by a little. And they're like, roll down your shorts. So I rolled them down, and they all started cheering. All <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's just moments like that that, like, you hold in, and yeah. you, like, think about it after the season. But it was, like, it was a really good season. Right, fun. right. So the people that are familiar with, uh, you know, with the Indianapolis area, um, you would have been, if you were a township kid, what school would you have been to? Went to, would you have went to Pike? Mm. No, I don't think I don't, I don't really like Pike at all. Well, I'm just saying, if you was a township kid and you went based up on where you live at, where yeah, yeah, yeah. you went to. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, Ritter is what is Ritter 4A? Three. Ritter 3A? Big 3A? Yeah. So, if you, I know you obviously probably have some friends that are in Pike, maybe North Central, yeah. that type of deal. Uh, uh, when you watch those games, uh, do you have the confidence that you can compete? And 4A, the way you can yeah. compete in 3A? Yeah, I got some friends that also, like, I mean, I th I know I can do it. I mm -hmm. got some friends that also want me to come and stuff. Right. Like, they believe in me, too. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I can do it. What made, you, what made you make the decision? I heard you, you earlier, you did, just a second ago, you said that you didn't like Pike. What made you What made you go to Rip? Uh, I mean, when I went, I just felt like I was at home. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, my main priority when I'm choosing any school, if it's high school or maybe when I choose my next college, I just want to feel like I'm at home and I don't want to second guess that. So, and then the coach, probably my favorite coach I've had. Right. And that's really it. Okay. So you wanted an at home feel. Yeah. Got you. Got you. So um, I know uh, freshman year, tell me a little bit about freshman year. I know, um, when you started, you were on JV, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then throughout the year, you ended up going to varsity, right? When you split yeah. in time? Yeah. So I was getting some time on varsity. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Tell me about that experience, man. 
um, you know, you got, you get into high school, you're a freshman, um, you know, you go kind of go right to JV. Did you expect that you were going to, did you expect that you were going to play varsity or you didn't know what to expect? What was that like going in? Well, I really didn't know. Mm -hmm. I, was, I thought I was going to play varsity mainly. Okay. Just because I don't, I mean, I just thought I was going to, to be honest. Right. But they put me on JV, which I, I feel better about it now because I had to work my way up to varsity. I just didn't get it handed. Right. And I wouldn't want to just get it handed because you, I, I don't know. I just feel like I need to work for it. Right. So I feel like I wasn't over at, I feel like I wasn't at the level of the other players, right. the higher seniors, because right. we were coming in. We had Nate, Joey, Dan, and Marlon. They were all seniors. And Nate was like the best at Ritter since, I mean, a long time. So we had an amazing lineup last year. So it was just work. I just had to work, and I did. And um, it was a game at Triton. It was away. Mm -hmm. And I had, like, 21 points mm -hmm. in JV, which I had been scoring stuff like that before. But he noticed that that game. Right. And uh, he threw a jersey at me. Uh, he said I almost pissed my pants, and I was <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was like very, I was very happy. Right. So that was the first time I got on varsity, and then going back to school is like you got upperclassmen noticing it, and they're talking about it. Right. I mean, you like you feel like you're the man, but I mean, you're not, but you just feel like it. Right. With everybody saying mm -hmm. stuff, so I mean, it was. I had a good freshman year, I feel like. Right. So how, how did you feel this year went? Hmm. <laughs> Just be honest. Mm. Well, wait, for me or for team? For you. For me, I feel like at first I wasn't shooting enough. Mm -hmm. And I noticed it. And then I started shooting and, I mean, like I was – arguably the best on the team but when I noticed that when I was scoring like nobody could stop me mm -hmm. I had that mindset right I feel like I was the best I could I feel like I was the best right. that's really it right. but when I wouldn't just nerves because you know it's my first time actually starting right I just I don't know right I just shut down so what do you what do you think uh what's your outlook on, you know, obviously I know coronavirus and all stuff that's going on right now, it's hard uh, to really look forward to what the future has to hold, but I mean, you have to. So what is your outlook on, um, you know, what's to come for your junior and senior year? Because I mean, you got to think about it, freshman and sophomore, you kind of getting dipped into it, but now junior, senior year is go time. You know what I mean? I know yeah. you probably plan on playing, you know, on the next level, which is college. Yeah. And, you know, it's time to go. What is your plan and what is your outlook? What does it look like for you? Uh, so this AU season <laughs> coming up in summer, uh, right after this quarantine stuff's done, I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to be working. I said, right. And I want to be, I mean, I'm dunking, but I need to get up there just right. to get myself noticed and stuff. And cause that's mainly what a lot of this stuff is. Like you got Jalen Green just dunking and stuff and, that's how he's getting known. Right. So I'm gonna this summer. I I mean I've got a couple interests, but no offers yet. So I mainly want to gain these interests and offers, mainly offers. Um, this summer league, right? In yeah. AAU season, plan on getting my first offer at this AAU season. Uh, and I uh my plan is to go in junior year with a mindset like I'm the best, like right, like no one can top me, right. Right. But still, like, keep my ego down and not be cocky about it. Right. Absolutely. The way you're going about it is totally correct. So, Jordan, what um, – who do you pattern your game after or, or who do you see uh, your game being like uh, kind of going forward? Um, I mean – A guy, is there anybody that you kind of – think that, you know, maybe your body type, the way you play, uh, that you kind of pattern yourself after? Uh, well, I've been told that, uh, like, my game 
resembles Zach Levine sometimes. Okay. Um, my favorite, I mean, my favorite players is LeBron James and high school player, it's uh, Josh, Josh Christopher. Okay. So I kind of watch them in highlights, mm -hmm. take some of their moves. But yeah, I've been mainly told that uh, about, I mainly been told that I play similar to Zach Levine sometimes. So. Got you, got you. So school-wise, I know you want to play basketball on the next level. Uh, what's your dream school? I don't know anymore. It was Duke. Okay. <laughs> Why is it not Duke anymore? I don't know. Just I've been looking. I've been paying more attention to basketball okay. in college, and I see a lot of other colleges. I just right. I mainly I mean it is Duke still. Right. But if I don't go there and not feel like I'm at home, right, I won't commit there. That's a great that's a great answer because a lot of kids want to go to places because of their names instead of going where you want it. I mean, yeah, because I I mean I can get as much playing time as they give me. Right. Be the star, but if I'm not gonna feel like I'm at home, I'm not gonna commit there. Right. I mean you look at Job ja Morant. I mean yeah. he went where he was wanted and guess what? He yeah. he should he should be rookie of the year. Easy. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, you know, uh Zion Zion obviously was hurt, but mm -hmm. I mean it would have been a real tight race. Might have been co uh rookie yeah. of the year is the way I look at it. Yeah. So man, um I, I just wanna know your thoughts, man. I know you do a lot of basketball training. Um, I know you watch a lot of basketball. Uh, what do you think it takes to go to the next level, the NBA uh, professionally? What do you, what do you think it takes? What's in, what's in your head of what needs to be done to get there? Um, you know, let me know what you think on that, and I'll give you uh, what I think on it. Uh, well, you always got to put in numerous amount of work mm -hmm. and hours each day right um i feel like if you get your name out there mm -hmm. then it'll bring more attention on you right and it'll, it'll be a lot easier for recruiters to come to you that's how i feel right. so i mean i just look at it like if college coaches are walk, watching me i just try to do my best mm -hmm. to get them to notice me mm -hmm. versus any other players on the court Right. And um, I feel like, I mean, I just feel like you just always got to be thinking about basketball, always got to be working on basketball right. if you really want to get to the next level. But, I mean, I need to improve on that also because right. I'm not always just about basketball. Right. I'm, I, I mean, I get distracted also, too. I mean, people are going to get distracted, but uh, it comes to a point where you got to lock down. I cool. think I'm going to do it this season, so. Yeah, my thoughts on it is this, man. Basketball is a rat race, right? Yeah. I mean, it is, there's for every – I mean, for any sport, but especially like basketball and football, I mean, you being on the top, people are gunning for LeBron James right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, want it, they want to be the best. Giannis is gunning for LeBron. You know what I mean? James Harden is gunning for LeBron. Somebody wants to take your name. They want to exit out and put their name on top of it. That's the number one thing, right? So that competitive nature, I think – that, that is one of the, the biggest things that uh, should fuel you, you know what I mean, going forward is being, is being ultra competitive. Uh, there's levels to basketball players, right? Um, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, like I said, we, we made the comparison with John Morant and, um, and uh, Zion Williamson. You know what I mean? There's levels to it because Zion Williamson was, you know what I mean? You could tell that he was bound for it. He's bound for greatness. He's built for the, he's built for the league. He already, you, every once in a while you have that guy that's going to come through there. That's going to be um, head and shoulders better than everybody. He's going to be the guy that can fit, that can right, right out the gate before uh, Zion Williamson ever touched the Pelicans. He could have filled the seats up. If they would have said he was just coming in to stand up on a podium and talk, people would, people were going to come just to watch. He has that type of persona. Then you have another another part of that group who is really like I'm not going to say that it's luck. I, I, I don't I don't believe that it's luck, but um, a lot of a lot of things have to a lot of a lot of things have to have to come together at the right time, right? Like um, obviously. 
you know, with your, with your body and maturing and, you know what I mean, your jump shots working, maybe even getting to the point where, you know, you get to the NCAA tournament, maybe you're not known that well and you come from a small school and you can, and you average a certain amount of point. Now you show out, you know what I mean? So um, that's the majority of, of the, the NBA uh, is those guys that maximize that opportunity. You know what I mean? They they found a way to seize it. They found a way to uh, to make the best of, of of their opportunity. And then some things went right at the same time at, at the right time. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe they had a down part of the season, or maybe they wasn't doing certain things. They've been working at their game, and then all of a sudden they implement it, and now you know they're looked at as oh man, well this guy can play in the league. There's a lot of there's a lot of guys that are walking around that are regular are regular guys like everybody else and or, or females that that can play on that level you know what i mean they can yeah. they can play on the nba level they can play on the wnba level but guess what maybe they got hurt <laughs> maybe they maybe yeah. um you know what i mean they didn't have a good enough run I, i'm not going to name names but i know from experience there's a couple guys that i thought that should have went to the nba and you know they didn't strike when the iron was hot you know, their sophomore year was the best year that they had, and they didn't leave their sophomore year because they made a run at the tournament. So it's it's a lot that goes into it. Uh, obviously, like I said, the big name guys are are kind of going to be destined for it, but then there's a lot of other people that are going to find their way. And then even even too, if your name is not all that great, you can go to a training camp and you can maximize that as well. Because yeah. there's a lot of kids that. You know, think about um, uh, what's his name? He's at Boston, Jalen Brown. Yeah, Jalen Brown wasn't. You know what I mean? Like he kind of, he kind of, he kind of reinvented himself. He was, he was always a good basketball player, but there's a lot of Jalen Browns out there. But guess yeah. what? He's at Boston. He's doing his, he's doing his thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. So um, another question I have, man. You know, what is your, what is your outlook on? You know, let's let's just talk about NBA right now. What's your outlook on how these guys carry themselves, how they how they actually molded themselves into the game? Like if you look at James Harden, right? When when I, I watched James Harden play in college, and James Harden was he was good, right? But he ain't the James Harden he is now. How do you think them guys get to that point? Mm. I mean when you get from college to the NBA, you obviously got to kick it up an arch right. and start being determined and you can't be distracted about anything. Yeah. So I felt like he, I mean, he obviously put in work, right. but he, he, he also had to probably listen to his coaches, his trainers and right. probably. You see that? Okay, I lost you for a second. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Say he, probably, he probably had to listen to his uh, coaches, his trainers and everything. Probably had to watch a whole bunch of film and everything. Right. But he was probably just working on his game and focused on himself, which has turned him to the player he is now. Which is right. Well, let me uh, – and, and like I said, I mean, you know, we're, we're, this, this interview that we're doing right now, I mean, this is educational not only for you but for all the other kids that are around, right? So yeah. – um, my brother, who played in the NBA for 16 seasons, 15 seasons, yeah. um, I got to see a lot of the, uh, of the NBA guys and who they were. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I really got to understand who they were. You see yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, like, some of the stuff that you see, you see this stuff on TV. You see, oh, my yeah. goodness, he got ice in his veins. He, he got 50 points. It's unbelievable. It's exciting. For me, the side of it that I saw was just that when these guys stepped on the court, I mean, the mindset and the confidence that they, that they walked around with was unbelievable, right? Quick, quick story. Um, we're down at IMG Academy in Florida, which right now Impact Basketball does everything out of Vegas and L.A. Yep. We still do stuff at IMG. IMG has, you know uh, – high schools and, and camps and stuff like that, a uh, high school team they have, and they have uh, camps and stuff like that, whatever. whatever. Um, I watched, we were, we were training uh, earlier that day, and I think it was like maybe like Al, Eric Barkley, Tyron Lue, uh, 
Chauncey Billups. Uh, I think Al Jefferson was there. Mama do, Mama do and Jai. Remember Mama do and Jai. I don't know. You may not. You may. I don't know, man. You you're a young guy. I'm 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 not old, yeah. but I'm older. So yeah. Mama do and Jai is seven foot three. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he's huge. And uh, in comes Vince Carter. And he puts his bag down. I mean, he came straight from his flight. Came straight to the gym. He didn't train nothing. Sat down, stretched, laughed, talked a little bit. And we had been in there. And, and the regiment of, of what we normally did was we normally got there, uh, we lifted weights. No, excuse me. Normally got there, we would stretch. We would be stretched by a trainer. We lift weights. We do on court workout. Maybe go get something to eat. Come back. Maybe play. And then you know Al Al was a hard worker, so we would we would play. And then when we come back later on, we shoot again. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Or he would shoot. You know, it was his job. And. Um, you know, so we did that that regimen, and then, you know, we, we came back getting ready to play, and everybody's good. You know what I mean? We, most of the people just left their court work out, got a little something to eat. They came right back. Vince Carter comes in. He's cold. I mean, he's stretching. And first couple plays down, he he made a couple moves, and he dunked the basketball so hard it was ridiculous. And then uh, another time down, it was him and Mama Duke. <laughs> Mama Dude's, I mean, Mama Dude's in front of the basket. He's seven foot. He's, you know what I mean? Like, I, he's wide in front of the basket, seven foot tall. And, and Vince goes up and he windmills on this guy. I mean, he windmills on him. And I mean, after he windmills on him, he runs back down like it's nothing. And, you know, just things like that, like seeing him come in and do that. Uh, you know, just the confidence of him and the swag. He just had it. You know what I mean? Just like Chauncey, like Chauncey Billups. Uh, I tell this all the time. Like I remember watching him. He was shooting threes almost from half court. Yeah. And, I mean, he made like fifteen in a row. Yeah. And I, I would just, I would ask some guys like, man, what? <laughs> how did you ever get this comfortable on the court? You know, like, sometimes these guys would be, we'd be playing up and down, and they'd be having a whole conversation. They're having a whole conversation. Yeah. Man, you can't, you know what? You can't stop me. He can't go. Some, you better switch this matchup, and yeah. they go by and dunk on somebody. They come back down and hey, switch it up. Nah, nah, I got him. And they, and it, you you know you can't guard me. And I mean, it was just the fact of uh, these guys. They, the, it, it's it's the the it factor about them. Like once they once they found themselves. Like I seen D Wade play in high school. And he was athletic, but it was nothing special. And then, like, when he got to that second year in the league, he was D-Wade. You know what I mean? Like, these it, – it's the training, um, coaches, all that plays a part in it. But mentally, how comfortable and yeah. how and how um, how confident are you? Because, like I said, just watching these guys, when they play – the confidence level is through the roof. And, and the crazy part is, is so many, even though these guys are kind of the same, their styles are a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like, even though he can make that move, but James Harden can put his spin on it. You know what I mean? He got the moves and then he got the step back, you know, and then he has the moves where, you know, he can hesitate and then they go down and dunk the ball on you. I mean, these the, the way that the NBA is looked at and how kids see it, and I mean, not just you, kids look at it as, Oh, well, you know what? They just they just had that that star power and they just all, they were just always that good. You know what yeah. I mean? The majority the majority of the guys that probably are, are in the NBA probably was just okay. You know what yeah. I mean? And so and some right stuff happened at the right time. You know, he grew from six three to six eight, or he yeah. or he, he got to be faster. He lost weight. He he gained some muscle. I mean, a lot of people don't when kids think about the NBA and playing on the next level, they don't think about that. I just did a podcast with David Logan. You know who David Logan is, right? I don't know if you know him. Okay. David Logan is, a, is an Indianapolis native. And, well, not well, he's from Chicago, but he, he's played ball. He's been in Indianapolis long enough. I guess you call him a native. But when I was in high school, my junior year, David, um, David got kicked off the team for, for grades or whatever. But my junior year, he was just decent at best. And, I mean, he came back the next summer. And, I mean, he was he was the best player on the team. Easy. You know what I mean? Like, I was fighting to be the best player on the team that junior year, and I might have been close. But, you know what I mean? Like, coming back my senior year, I'm like, oh, yeah, I play football. I didn't – I wasn't in the gym like he was. And, like I said, it was just a mindset thing. 
Every time he caught, every time he had the ball, he felt like he could put it in the basket. So yeah. that's something that you know I want for you. I'm telling you this stuff that I want you to challenge yourself going forward. That you're not a, you can work on your game all day long. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can you can listen to coaches all day long. It's that attitude, and the attitude is really kind of like you know what I mean. It's it's uh, almost kind of narcissistic. <laughs> you know, you understand what narcissistic is? Like it's almost narcissistic in the fact that you got to walk around and your stuff doesn't think doesn't stink, but you don't put you don't uh, project that onto your teammates. Yeah. Because if they if they feel that, then it's gonna be all bad anyway. Because people are gonna be like, oh, well, he think he's better than everybody, and they're not gonna they're not gonna want to they're not gonna uh, push for your success as as hard as you're gonna push for. It. You see? What yeah. I'm yeah. So uh, you know. I, I'm just trying to make you understand, man, you know, just going forward, you know, in, in Ritter, you know, um, you know, as, as you, as you're looking to figure out to come into your own, you, you gotta, you have to train your body as well as your mind. Cause the mindset, the mindset is what is what's going to make you, you know what I mean? If you, if you take, if you take the majority of the NBA guys that are in the league right now, the majority of them, not Giannis, not LeBron, because they're built, they're built different. You see what I'm yeah. saying? But if you take, you know what I mean, a Jason Tatum, a Zach Levine, you know what I mean, and you just keep them athletic and they don't have the mindset of what they have, that, like go get it, they're just going to be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's a lot of athletic, I ain't going to say athletic dummies, but there's a lot of athletic guys that have NBA athleticism that can't play on that next level. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's just something that you, you need to understand, you know, and going forward and stuff like that. So, man, what's – last question, um, you know, as you're going through this experience um, in high school and, you know, you're playing ball, um, you know, what, what has been so far – I know you're only a sophomore. What's been the most memorable um, uh, game or memorable moment that you've had um, in basketball so far? Um, just period. Just period. Or I mean, you you can have a series of them. Um. Well. Hmm. What else is there? So I was playing. That this is one moment where I like. It was when I I always look back at it, uh-huh. and it was like when I really noticed that, that, that I could be something and that I need to start taking it serious. Right. I was in maybe a sixth or seventh grader. Okay. And it was at the Pacers uh, facility. Okay. And I had took a picture with Jeff Teague before the game. Mm-hmm. And he was like asking about us and I was telling him that I I like to be on this team. Right. And that and he was like, all right, I'm gonna come watch you. And he and he watched you for for a couple minutes. And um well I, it was longer than a couple minutes. It was pretty he watched me for a pretty long time. Right. But that game I think I had it was either twenty five or thirty something. Right. And I was and I was just like I had the mindset like someone was actually watching me, right? And that yeah. I needed to do it for me and my family, like like I I could get somewhere, right? And that was when I really like it clicked about how good I could be if I really take it serious. And then um, another moment, what well, well, what's happened so far this season? Well this high school season. Um, uh, Beach Grove. Okay. The Beach Grove game, it was a conference game. And um, our first game we were supposed to play, it was home. Right. It got canceled because snow. Mm-hmm. It just came in out of nowhere. Right. So that get, it gets postponed and gets uh, put back on Tuesday. And um, we're, we're practicing for it and everything. 
and um that game I forget my my undershirt mm-hmm. and I wear an undershirt every game <laughs> so I'm I'm freaking out like oh my god I'm gonna have a terrible game what what ended up being my career high this season it was 23 okay and uh, we were just I, I was just going back and forth at it I like I had the green light I went five for five from three mm-hmm. and I went just one shot the whole game so I was just hitting everything and it, and it, we were going against a a point guard that's a junior right and he's he had I think 30 something 30 right because he has that mindset and he right. you got it and they were going against a, a big that's committed to Ohio State he's uh d line for football okay and he's going I don't know his name but he's like 200 something pounds, solid, right. tall, a lot taller than that. Our center, right? Just big. So, I mean, I, just, I don't know what clicked. I just felt like I was on go. So, I, so that next game, man, did you did you play without an undershirt? No, come no. on, man. That listen to me. So, wait, you said, you yeah, that- yeah, I did. The next, the next game, I ended up picking a, a sickness though, and I didn't play that good, but. Okay. I was about to say, I mean, if you – I'm not the most superstitious guy in the world, <laughs> but if you played – Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just Tim Luke came to that game. That's a, that's, a new, that's a new superstition for you. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, man, uh, I want to thank you. want to thank you for coming on, man. Um, one thing I'm going to leave you with, and I'll leave – you know, everybody's watching this video, I'm going to leave you with the same thing. I mean, you got to think about it. A lion's a lion, right? You can't mm-hmm. go walk in a lion's cage and say, hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm taking this over. Like, yeah. A lion's, a lion's going to jump on you. I yeah. mean, he's the king of the jungle for a reason. I, and I love that analogy. I tell people this all the time. It's like, you know, um, out, of, out of all the cats in the wild, the lion has the, um, has the weakest bite. Yeah. But he's the king of the jungle. Mm-hmm. So why is, it, why is it a cheetah the king of the jungle? You know what I mean? But – I mean, that's kind of what it takes. If a lion, if if you're out in public and a lion is walking around, you going to a safety. And I mean, that's just like LeBron, right? King James, uh, they they put all those lions around him because I mean, he just smelled blood. Yeah. Whenever he steps on the court, you worried about what he doing more than worrying about what your game is doing. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I mean, you got to take that with you, man. Thanks for coming on, man. We, I, I'm hoping, I'm I'm wishing you uh, all the all the best going forward with Ritter. Uh, yeah. I'm sure I'll get you in some training sessions soon. We got to get you out there. I know your day. I got to stop messing around. Mm-hmm. But uh, like I said, man, we we, we definitely um, appreciate you coming on. Uh, Jordan Turner, um, what, what year do you graduate? You're 2022? Yep. Yep. So, Jordan, look look him up. Jordan Turner, uh, Cardinal Ritter in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, he yep. graduates in 2022. Uh, you have an Instagram or any other uh, social media tags that people can. Uh, yeah, I got an Instagram. Uh, okay. It's uh, for letter by letter. I M B mm-hmm. dot J A Y T, all lowercase. Okay. So, okay. You got anything else we need to look out for? Just look out for me this season. That's all right, it. Man. All right, man. We appreciate you, bro. All right. Thanks for having me. No problem.